Hello everyone, this is my testimony. I just want to first start by praying for myself as well as everyone that is going to listen to this voice note. So if you can just please close your eyes and bow your head. Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you so much for the ability and opportunity to come and testify of your works and how great you are. Thank you for allowing me to speak from the heart today. I ask you that you would please tie my tongue and that everything I will speak will come from you, Holy Spirit. That everyone who listens to this voice note will know that this is the truth. I'm not speaking from myself or from anything other than you. Lord, wherever this voice note goes, whoever it reaches, I ask that you would also protect them. That all the seeds that are being sown today will fall on fertile ground. That you would please protect it, Lord. Let it grow. I ask you that everyone under the sound of my voice, that you would please protect them, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. And I ask you to please send your angels to guard them with swords of fire. Thank you so much for the truth that is coming out, Lord. For using me to the glorification of you and your kingdom. You alone are worthy of my praise. You alone are worthy to sit upon the throne, Lord. Thank you so much. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so I think the best thing will be just to start at the beginning. Um, so I was born out of wedlock and... Um, my both my parents at that stage were drinking a lot, so I didn't grow up in a very good household, um, receiving a lot of love and stuff like that. So yeah, I just used to remember memories of them always fighting and stuff. Um, but when I was about three years old, they departed and. My mom got a, a husband, my stepdad, and my father, he had just a lot of women in his life. It was only later in life that he actually repented and settled down, got married and had children with his wife. Um, <clears throat> so my stepfather, he is also an alcoholic till this day. Um, so growing up as that as well, so it was my father, my mother, and my stepdad now all alcoholics. So you can just imagine how it was. I I remember at the a stage my mom was working in a in a bar. Um, she was working there for extra money. Um, and then my stepdad would come and pick me up at about, I don't know, two, three, just after three, because he used to work on the mine. So uh, they usually, like, stop working at three o'clock or just before three. Then he would come and pick me up, and we would go to my mom's work, and I would be there. And, yeah, they, my mom would work, and he would start to drink, and they would drink and everything, and then... Because she used to work there, she had to stay there until everyone left. So by that time, there wasn't all these laws um, that say that the place has to close at 12 or at 2 o'clock in the morning. It was just whatever time you close is fine. So usually uh, like 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, we will come home. I will get in bed, I will sleep, wake up at 6 o'clock and then get ready for school and then go to school. So that was like normal for me. Um, I grew up and I loved 
like that for a long time so I didn't know anything else and then you know when you are not in control of your body when you are drunk or under the influence of anything else when you are not sober minded that a demon can manifest through you and stuff like that um, so there was a lot of fighting going on in the house always a lot of screaming and stuff I um, till this day I don't like when people argue or loud voices because um, I was so accustomed to it when I was younger that it didn't even bother me but after I got saved and repainted and and um, I got a, a fleshly heart uh, where God just came and filled me with love now I do, just don't like it anymore um, but yeah like I used to go to sleep with lots of screaming and fighting and stuff waking up in the morning to go to school and I would just see like blood everywhere and things broken everywhere and one lying here the other lying there and yeah it was just crazy and I used to live like that for years and then I remember also one memory I have is waking up during the night or something I was sleeping and I just woke up from intense like screaming and stuff and I went to my mom's uh, room and I saw her and she was sitting at the in the bathroom and she tried to commit suicide so she was cutting her her wrist and it was just bleeding everywhere everywhere and then because my mom has she has very thin blood so it, it just there was just blood everywhere and it was chaos and stuff and um, I remember that I as well as my mom always used to also get beaten a lot from a young age there was always a lot of ugly in the house and um, yeah so one night I got beaten so bad that I had to go to the hospital and they asked me what happened and I told them what happened I told them that my stepfather beat beat me because he asked where my mom is and I said I don't know where she is and then he started beating me and then they told that she has to make a case against him so she did but later on um, she went and revoked the the case against him um, yeah so there was just a lot of crazy stuff and then when I couldn't take it anymore this side I went and I lived in with my real father um, who lives in another um, at another place so I usually just moved a lot maybe two years here two years there just no structure or anything like that and then when I went to my father he would always just because it was just me and him he would just leave me at people and then go and drink for the whole weekend or whatever and then come and pick me up after the weekend and stuff or when I was with him at home he would just like invite all these friends and everyone just to get drunk and yeah so it it wasn't very nice and stuff so um at a young age I would say about 14 like when I went to um to grade 8 yeah um, that's when things started to go haywire um, I started um, getting becoming friends with the wrong crowd so um, I started smoking just normal cigarettes that then went to smoking weed and then I got invited to all the parties and stuff so my father by that time um, not by that time from from I was born it was like he didn't really see me as his child um, even till this day it's like I'm just like that woman's child 
like me and him we don't really have a connection or a father and daughter bond like we really talk it's always just like hey how are you yes the weather yes good and stuff like that so um when i went and lived with him by that time he put me in the hostel so I was just there on my own and I could do what I want. Weekends I could stay in the hostel, so weekends I could go and party and he wouldn't even know. And I don't think it really bothered him because he was struggling like how to raise a child and everything. So I think it was also more convenient for him as well. So I tried to find love in other stuff we all know that we have that void inside of our hearts and we try to fill it but it's only God that can actually fill it I only know that now but yeah so, so since the age of 14 I then started experimenting then with weed and I started um, going to parties and we would drink and get so drunk and when I come to um, then visit my my mom like on holidays and stuff like that she would also buy me alcohol because they also used to drink when they are here at home so then I would also start to drink here with them and everything and then I also um, by that stage started to cut myself um, I think I just got to a stage where all the hurt was just so much and I couldn't take it anymore and I didn't know like where to go with it. You see, we all have so much hurt in life but the only way you can get rid of that is to go to God and give it to Him where He can heal you and fill you with love and compassion and empathy and that stuff but I mean by that time I didn't know God so I started cutting myself and I didn't want anyone to know it because I didn't do it to get attention I did it to really just to get rid of the pain so I used to cut myself on my legs um, both my upper legs um, and that continued like for 13 years I was extremely addicted to it I really really struggled to stop with that because that is one of the things that really helped me by that time just to get rid of anything um, any uh, hurt I have inside of my heart and like forgetting the past and stuff like that so I had to get like extremely big tattoos and stuff just to cover it up um, this was also done before I got saved but yeah so then I continue just going on in this path and that time also my father met his now wife and yeah we didn't see eye to eye I don't know but um, from a young age or since we met it's like she never really liked me don't really know till this day <laughs> I went so many times especially after I got um, saved gave my life to God and went so many times to just go and make it right And but it's like she, she never wanted to do from her side but yeah so then um yeah, we used to fight a lot as well and one time I remember she came into my room and she said uh, she wants to take my measurements because um, she wants me to go on a diet with her um, she says it's extremely focused on her weight um, so she said that she wants me to go on a diet with her so she's, she's gonna come and take my measurements so that we can know how much I will lose and everything like that and she taught me to, to take off all my clothes okay not all my clothes but like um, like I have my underwear on and then she will come and take my measurements and 
I remember she went down and she um, took measurements of my legs and she saw all all the the lines on my legs and the open wounds and stuff and she asked me what's this and I just uh, like started crying I just wanted like some some I don't know form of just I don't know maybe some love just some attention at that time just someone who I can pour my heart out maybe to help me and I just started talking to her I said I have so much hurt and um everything and I started smoking weed as well and I opened up to her and everything and I told her please don't go and tell my father please because I know he's, he's very strict and and stuff and she just walked out of my room she went straight to him and she told him everything um, I think I was 16 I then went to rehab for the first time I went to rehab they they started me on like a lot of meditation and stuff but when I came out I just got worse um, I just went into smoking weed way more um, going to a lot more parties drinking a lot more and everything like that so it just got worse and then when I was 17 so a year later on um, I was smoking weed at home and the lady who worked there she she smelt it and she told then my stepmom and my stepmom came home um, and she she made me take a, a a taste like a drug taste and then they saw that I was positive for weed and when my father got home he picked me up by his hands and he told me that oh no that was the okay yeah so I went and fell to sleep again because sometimes weed makes you um, like very sleepy and the next morning I woke up my father came into the room and he said that when I get when he gets home I have to be out of there um, because my stepmom also went to school and she told the principal about me smoking weed and the principal told me that I have to go to um, rehab again otherwise they're gonna expel me and I said no I'm not going to rehab again then he told me okay then I'm expelled and I also got expelled out of the hostel by that time yeah I'm sorry if um, the story doesn't line up it's just like all mixed together everything happened at the same time I also got expelled out of the hostel because I had uh, weed plants in my hostel room so I remember just one day I, I got to the hostel f um, after school and I saw like the police with the dogs and I just ran into my room and I th threw everything in the in the toilet and everything but yeah I came out because everyone like started telling about it so then my father said I have to get out of his house and I'm not welcome there anymore so I called my mom and I, and I told her listen I've been kicked out can you please come and fetch me and then she and my stepfather came they fetched me um, and I came and I then got went to another school this was grade 11 like June July I think and I, and I remember the first day I went to school, I went to the principal's office. He told me he he heard what happened and that I must sign a letter stating that it's my final written warning in that school. If I do anything, they would immediately expel me without like any 
hearing or whatever, they just have complete authority to expel me immediately. I said it's okay and I signed the paper and I was in school there. So I just, I I forgot to say now, but also at the age of 14 when everything started um, at the beginning, like of grade 8 and stuff, I also like met a lady she worked in a bar where my mom and stepdad used to go and drink and then one day she got my number from my mom my mom told her please just text my my daughter and just tell her I love her and I think about her and stuff um, that time it was still mixed <laughs> so yeah it was quite a while ago and um, I mean, I was so lonely and stuff, and me and this girl started to talk, and and she said, okay, I'm going to go now, I'm like, why do you not want to speak to me anymore? She said, no, because your mom said I'm not allowed to speak to you because I am a lesbian, and I said, no, man, my, my mom doesn't need to know. So we just continued, and then just a little while later, me and her were in a relationship. So we were in a relationship for over four years. Um, so then when I moved to my mom, um, this girl was also here. So by that time, when they were still drinking and stuff, um, like she would be a place of refuge where I can just go and get rid of everything. So I think I just used a, a lot as a crutch just to get out of this house and just to be a place where I can feel safe, maybe get love. That's not real love, but I mean, at that stage, I think I would have settled for any compassion or anything just to feel better about myself. Um, and then I also met one of her friends. Um, and she used to um, use more or oh, other drugs so then we started um, sniffing cocaine and cat together and then it, you know, from there it just like it expanded wildly we went to other drugs like psychedelics and um, like ecstasy, LSD acid at least the acid same thing it just like it went worse from day drinking like like I would drink so much I remember like one time I would just go on a bender for three weeks where I barely slept I would just like sniff cocaine and drink and sniff cocaine and drink like barely eating barely sleeping just go on and I mean, I had no regard for my life whatsoever. I didn't care about anyone or anything. I was so numb because, I mean, they. I was since I was 16, like I said, I've been on so many medications that suppresses all your feelings and emotions. And then I'm also drinking everything away. I'm on drugs and I'm also cutting myself as well. So I was so numb that I didn't care about anything or anyone like I just wanted to quote unquote enjoy my life and whatever but you know you see these people when you um, when your eyes have opened after you've repented and you, you realize that those people are actually so empty inside they look so happy like they actually quote unquote are enjoying life but they're not at all they're not at all um, they are so empty inside there's so much void inside of them and they're just trying to fill it trying just to feel something and nothing can comprehend to the love of God I mean I know that now but yeah, so many people out here like enjoying their lives and they're saying they're so happy and everything, but we know they're not. It's it's so sad actually. Um, but yeah. So then, um, I think by this time I'm now in, in matric, and um. Then I told that girl, yeah, I don't want to be in a relationship with anymore. And then now I'm just like drinking and 
I'm working part time so I have money and I'm just using my money just for drugs and just for drinking and like whatever so I just went through so many relationships but not with guys only with women at that time and um yeah it was just extremely ugly just drinking and stuff and the thing is I have a very addictive personality especially now because I know of bloodline curses and everything like that um, my mother and my father both being alcoholics and everything um, that I couldn't just go out for a drink or two and then go home when I started drinking I drank until I like um, blacked out every day so you would wake up with so much regret because you can't remember what happened yesterday and then people would tell you what they did and so much shame and everything so yeah um, just not a, a thing I want back in my life ever again I think I just continued like this but okay let me just tell you about um, matric end exam so also while I was writing my end exam I was every <laughs> every taste I was either high or drunk so this is also just a testimony in itself that the only way I actually made my trick was through God there's no other way I didn't study I didn't care I got home I would put my my school bag down I would go and drink even like on Sunday evenings I would drink I would come home at 9 10 o'clock Monday I would go and write my exam I didn't even know I passed my matric the people by that time I was drinking with can't call them friends um, because after I stopped drinking everyone departed from me but they called me they're like hey you you actually made me trick I'm like what and they're like yes even with an extinction I couldn't believe it so that was just the grace of God on my on my life and by that time I didn't know it but just as I continue through this testimony you would realize how many times God's hand was upon me even though I didn't even know it you see the thing is God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us and it will come to pass if you um, let him if you accept him as your Lord and your Savior um, but he will, he will fight for you even if you try to run away from him if he, ha if he has called you for something, if you are his chosen child, he will do so much to get your attention, no matter what you try to do to, to not see it or not to realize it. Um, so, so many times where God has actually helped me, pulled me through where I never knew it. It was only after I got saved and the scales was removed from my eyes where I actually realized that, wow, God, like, from, since I was a baby, you had a plan and a purpose for me. So, one thing, I just want to say this quickly before continuing. One thing I've realized is, we should know that the enemy is, isn't omnipresent. He isn't everywhere. So for him to actually go and destroy each and every person in each and every generation's lives, it's going to be a little bit difficult. So one thing I've realized is he looks in a, in a family, in a bloodline or in a generation, he specifically uh, searches for those God has chosen. And from a young age, he tries to destroy them. Because it's easier to get that child destroyed and without an identity and stuff from a young age. Um, because he knows as soon as you give your life to God, he has lost the battle. So this is just some encouragement that if you have ever felt like... <laughs> 
since I was a baby, like my my life was so like chaotic and all the stuff happening to me, where you may be like questioned and say, God, but why me? Why is this happening to me? Because I even until this day, like all my cousins and and nephews, they never ever went through even one percent of the stuff I went through. But I know now that I was the chosen one in the bloodline to remove all the curses and everything like that. So, yeah, I really hope that maybe this encourages you just to know that you could maybe, well, quite possibly, um, be a chosen one of God. And the enemy is out to destroy you because you are a threat to his kingdom and he can maybe see the anointing God has on your life and he doesn't want it fulfilled. So from a young age since you were a baby, he came and he tried to attack you so you would give up and depart from God. So yes. Um so then after school I went, I took like a leap year or whatever, yeah, one year where you don't w- um, go and study or anything. So I was just working part time as well, still just drinking and everything. But I have to say, um, now after we talked about God having so much grace on my life and um, actually working with me without me knowing it, um, after matric, I stopped using drugs completely, just like that. I woke up one day and I'm like, nah, I don't want to do this anymore. Just like that. Like, I don't know, the people around me still continue. They didn't even bother me. Like, if they, like, offered to me, I'm like, no, I'm fine, thanks. But I have to admit, I still um, occasionally smoked weed. I, You know, we grow up, especially when you're in the world, where you're being told that there's nothing wrong with weed. It's just a herb and God made everything. And But it's not. It is, it is a gateway drug. It is. I wouldn't say like for what it is is like but it's for what it represents because when you smoke weed you open yourself up to the spiritual realm so you give demons and say satan legal right over you so that opens the doors and then you just get in deeper and deeper and deeper so it isn't just a, a harmless herb and whatever no you can use it for medicinal purposes Yes, because God did create it actually for medicinal purposes. So the CBD in it can be used as medicinal purposes, but you cannot use the THC, which actually is the compound making your eye. So I would recommend people rather drink the tea or something. Don't smoke it because when you smoke it, you are releasing the THC, which makes your eye. And it makes you vulnerable and open for demonic possession. So a lot of people don't know this. Because we are so accustomed to, no, it's just like, it's just like a herb or whatever. So yes, and then I started studying. Um, but I was also, I wasn't really, didn't have real clear goals of any or anything that I wanted to pursue or become in life. So I was studying something I thought that would maybe make my father love me more. Um, I went and I never got like in, into that work line. So then my parents taught me, listen, by this time, it's now six years after I graduated school. Yeah. I still didn't have like a, a, a work, like a career. So, so they taught me, so you, know, you really have to get a job now because you can't like... Um, just keep looking after you and stuff. 
So I did get a, a job and I, God really blessed me there. Even though I didn't know him by that time. Um, I just want to say this. I forgot about it now. Um, so that year, that was 2017. I think the previous year, 2016, was the the first year or the first time I actually tried to commit serious suicide. I tried before, not successful or even close to successful at all. So in 2016, I tried to commit suicide. I drank a lot of medication because I, I was on my parents' um, medical aid by then, and a lot of these psych psychiatrists and psychologists, they just prescribe stuff to you, never actually getting to the root of the problem. So I remember at a stage, I was like on 12 different schedule f um Schedule 5 and 6 medications, you know, like whenever you go, okay, you know, let's just up the dosage or just give you something else or it's just like writing a script all the time. So I was on so many, so many medication, um, like I just drank some of it, not this time, I didn't drink everything, I just drank and I thought this will be enough and I just like started vomiting and stuff and I didn't have any like control over my body I couldn't move my body or anything like my muscles were twi twitching everywhere I just I couldn't like um, have any control over my body so yeah but even like before that my mom was so accustomed to this that for, like even now, I mean I've been repented for how many years, she she still doesn't actually want to come into my room because she's so scared of that she might just f find me dead because I mean I tried to do it so many times and I know she would come in, she would just like see blood everywhere where I would just cut myself like completely to shreds where my legs would just bleed and everything would be just bloody and I think because my mom stopped drinking, I also didn't say that. When I was in matric, she stopped drinking completely. So after that, I, I continued drinking, continued drinking. And I used to always throw it in her face. Like, see, when I was drunk, I would tell you, see, this is what you were like. This, this is what I had to deal with every day. I used to look after you because you couldn't look after yourself and stuff like that. Like I was extremely disrespectful towards my mom. And I am so glad that God just saved both of us because she's also repented and me. And you know, God just restores. He really, really is not a man that he should lie. Whatever is in his word is the truth and he restores everything the locusts have come to steal I thank him so much for my, me and my mom we have such a great relationship now I mean it's amazing so I'm, I'm so grateful for what God did and then um, yeah so I went to rehab once again then um, for depression or whatever in day, I met a married woman, and then me and her, we started the relationship, because, you know, by this time, I'm still also a lesbian and everything, and, you know, yeah, just deep in the world, and, um, got out of day, and then in 2017, in January, I went to rehab again. This is now before my parents told me I need to get a job. Ne? Um, and in rehab, I met this guy and I fell completely in love with him. This was the first time I ever fell in love with a man. Ne? I was so smitten by this guy. I was so like head over heels and I thought, yes, see, this is like the man I'm going to marry and everything, whatever. And um, 
yeah, we start we we started the relationship, but he was like going through a divorce, and that why that's why he was there because he couldn't like <coughs> go through all the pain and everything. And then when he soon to be ex wife found out about me and him, she committed suicide. And they had two beautiful children, and yes, it was just chaotic, man. And um, by that time, I'm on even more medication now because I just got out of rehab again. So I'm on even more medication now. And me and him, I was at his place, and I just started feeling like he was pushing me away. So I felt like, no... There's someone else who doesn't want me anymore and everything. So if you understand like um, soul ties and blood ties and stuff like that, it this will also like help you better understand why I was so attached to him. Because this was the actual first man I had eat the course with. So it just felt like my world was falling apart and I came back home and I just drank all my medication I had left by that time and that was like <coughs> in the middle of the month or something but I had like over 300 pills and because I didn't succeed the previous time uh, the year before I knew this time what actually needs to be done so I drank all those pills and I was just out of it so while I was dying here in my bedroom, we had a lady with her two children staying um, in our out room, and I was lying on my back. I fell asleep and I started to vomit, but because I was out of it, um, the vomit went into my lungs, so I was suffocating myself. And I was, I was I, like, I couldn't respond to anything, so I didn't even know that I was vomiting or anything. So I couldn't, like, turn on my side. So she heard, because it's just here close to my room, and she said she heard, like, this noises and stuff, and she came running in, because they also know my history and stuff. So I think everyone around me always knew, like, I don't want to. I didn't want to live by that time. I was very suicidal and just didn't care. And she came into my room and she put me on my on my side so I can just like vomit everything out. And she called the ambulance. And by that time, I was now older, so I couldn't be on my parents' medical aid anymore. So I had to go to the state hospital. They came, but when the paramedics came, they like already told them they don't think there's anything they can do for us. Uh, for me, because I was already blue, like my whole body was blue. And yeah, I don't think I was even breathing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I was. I remember while this happened, I had my first spiritual encounter. What I can remember, um, I was lying on my bed, and this lady, she was on my left hand side, and my mom was like raised up. Um, standing with her arms folded on my right hand side I and mean, when she was just looking down at me and she, she talked in such a lovely voice and she told me what's wrong and I just started crying and I said mom I don't want to be here anymore I said this guy he, he has someone else and I, I, do, I just don't have a purpose I don't know why I'm here I don't want to live anymore and she, she was talking so calmly and so lovingly towards me. And she said, okay, so, but if you give up now, it's going to be, it's going to be done. There is nothing that can be done after this. And then all of a sudden, reality just set in. And I realized that, listen, if I die now, I'm going to hell. I don't know God. I didn't repent. Um, I didn't accept him as my Lord and my Savior. Like, all of a sudden, I just got like that. 
I was like shook to the core and I realized like it's now or never. And I got so scared and I asked, okay, mom, no, I understand. Uh, okay, what should I do if I don't want to die? And she said, just sit up straight. That's all you have to do. I said, I can't. I don't have any function of my body. I can't even move my arm by myself. I say, and this lady on my left hand side, she keeps pushing me on my shoulder on my left hand shoulder the whole time she keeps just pushing me down the whole time whispering in my ear it's gonna be okay don't worry just lie down just lie down and the more I try to like pick myself up just to set up straight she she just pushes me down the whole time and she said it's fine don't worry everything's gonna be okay just the whole time pushing me on my shoulder whispering in my ear and I'm just I'm asking my mom, can you just please help me? I, I'm I'm so struggling so much, like I don't have any function of my muscles, and this lady keeps pushing me, and I'm like, just help me, please. And she, uh, with her arms folded, she just looked down at me. She said, I'm not allowed to help you. If you want to do this, you have to do it yourself. And I just like gathered all the strength I had, and I stood up. Oh, I, I not stood up, I sat up on the bed, and as soon as I sat up, I was out. Um, I woke up, I think a week later, and yeah, I was in a, in a coma for a week, and um, when I got to the hospital, they said that my lungs had collapsed, my heart stopped, and I went into complete organ failure. I was completely dead. There was nothing they could do for me, um, but they tried to re resuscitate me, revive me, so they put pipes everywhere, like in my lungs, in my stomach, just to get all the pills and the fluid out of my lungs and everything, and then they shocked me three times and everything, and then miraculously... I lived and I was in a coma uh, for a week just like on all these monitors and so many pipes coming in and out and everywhere <coughs> <coughs> sorry um, excuse me for that and I just remember the first thing I said when I woke up a nurse came and she looked so shocked to see me awake and I just told her I have to pee <laughs> and I'm so like I don't even know what's going on like um, I really didn't even know why I'm in the hospital what's going on yeah and this lady she just looks at me and she runs away and I'm like what is going on yeah I have to go to the bathroom and now she's running away she went and she called all the nurses and she's like she's alive and everyone just came rushing in eh? and they started like telling me there was nothing we could do for you we thought you're gonna die there was nothing like this is a miracle this is a miracle we can't believe you're awake there was no way and people just came they said we saw you lying there there was nothing 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 we could do for you like not even sisters people above them doctors everything they say so many people came to me they said we saw you we we saw everything that happened and there was like medically nothing and i was just like i didn't even uh know because i forgot about a spiritual encounter i had i couldn't remember that until i don't know how many years later um, and I was just like, oh, okay, didn't really care <laughs> at that stage. Um, so I got out of hospital, and that's when my parents, like, told me, you have to now get a job, and I got a job. Yes, and God really blessed me at this job. <coughs> um, his hand was on me since a young age, even though I really didn't know it. So um, I got promoted very quickly, even though others didn't, 
people working there way longer than me and stuff. But, yeah, that was just God. I mean, all the all the glory to Him. So, this was 2017. In 2019, um, I was just going through like a depressive state again. <clears throat> and um, my mom called a lady from the church and she came and she spoke to me and she asked me, are you baptized? I said, no. And she said, okay, but the Bible says that you have to go out in all the earth. You need to baptize people and everything. Would I like to give my life to God and get baptized? And I was so moved, like, you know, if you can just feel like the Holy Spirit tugging at you. And it was here at our house and she baptized me in our pool. And like, I didn't even know the Bible anything about the Bible. I didn't know God. I didn't know anything. And I could I think by that time I couldn't even remember the spiritual encounter I had while I was dying. So two weeks after I got uh, baptized, a guy started working with me where I worked. And at the beginning, I didn't like this guy at all, like nothing. He was just so arrogant and he had such a big ego and um, like I, I, just something in me. I, I didn't like this guy, but as we started working more and more together, I started saying, okay, but he's actually not that bad. And even though I got baptized and gave my life to God, I didn't read my Bible or anything. I mean, I'm still new. It's been two weeks and um, I'm, I'm still smoking weed by that time. So me and this guy, we used to smoke weed together. Um, I don't want to go into great big detail. The, the, thing, the main purpose of this testimony is to give glorification to God. I know why this stuff happened to me. This is to glorify God so I can help others who are going through the same stuff. So I don't want to go into big, great detail. I think I'm just going to be on the surface. And then wherever the Holy Spirit leads me to go deeper, I will go in deeper. But long story short, this guy was a Satanist saint um, on my path, so he's like a recruitment or whatever, and if he can get me, I am now a daughter of the Most High because I was baptized, I'm cleansed, I'm purified, and if he can get me to sell my soul to Satan, he will climb in ranks um, as a Satanist in a spiritual realm, where he will get whatever he wants, fame or wealth or whatever. Um, so that is the main reason he was saint. But I know now it, it was allowed by God. I know why. I don't have to um, explain myself to anyone or why it happened. Because I know a lot of people is like, how can a God of love allow that? And I know what God revealed to me, what the Holy Spirit said to me, why it has happened. I cannot help someone through something if I didn't go through it. If I didn't lose someone very close to me, let's say for instance, I lost my brother. I can't say to you, who lost your brother, I'm very sorry about that. I know what you're going through, but it's going to get better. I can't because I didn't go through that. But if I went through it, I will be able to help you. And I know that's why God allowed it. So in any way, all the glory is for Him and for His kingdom. And I am called according to His purpose. So that is why this happened. So yes, um... One night I was smoking weed and I was just like completely out of it. And um, 
me and him, this guy, we sat around the table <coughs> and we just started talking. Um, so they would like use movies or fantasy um, stories just to get you into like this fan- fantasy realm where you can just start talking and saying stuff and whatever. So they were like, say for instance, there's this movie and in this movie this happened and what do you think will happen after that? And then you would say, maybe this and they're like, no, just so to get you into that. <coughs> and we started talking and whatever. One thing led to another, I called up a demon and um, I just remember we sat around that table and I, I just like, even though I was so high and so like, I don't know, blind or whatever, I don't know. I just like saw this thing and I'm like, who are you? And he said, no, I am the Holy Spirit. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Why do you have to manifest through someone else? And, yeah, we all know the father of lies is, I mean, uh, you, I've never heard so many lies in my whole life than I did in that one hour. But anyway, um, I remember clearly. There's some stuff I remember clearly. Let me just, before I go further, just say that a lot of stuff, the Holy Spirit did not reveal to me because he knows um, that maybe I won't be able to deal with the trauma that goes with it so a lot of stuff has been kept from me um, like I can't remember it but the Holy Spirit has like told me it just so I can repent from it and be freed from the spiritual chains and and stuff like that but I can't remember it at all so there's also a lot of stuff that I can't remember but most of the stuff um, I think that will be helpful has been revealed to me because for a long time I couldn't remember anything Um, they use what they call mind control demons like hypnotherapy that's why you never go for hypnotherapy like they hypnotize you, they use like sorcery and everything on you and you can't remember that. So like I would see this guy every day because we work together and I wouldn't even remember that the previous day what we talked about or anything, you understand? So for after this happened, this thing where I called up the demon and everything, there was like I think six months six to eight months where I just couldn't remember anything at all, nothing. Um, Where I was so like hypnotized and the seat and everything else. So then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just started revealing some stuff to me and yeah. But let's go back to what happened. And um, I remember clearly like I didn't know God, I didn't know anything and I just Like I said, I command you in the name of Jesus, tell me what is going on right now. I I clearly uh, remembered saying something like in the line, I command you in the name of Jesus, you have to tell me the truth, what is going on right now. And all I got was, this is your, your hour of trial. And I was like, what is that? And he's like, it means I have an hour to do with you whatever I can. And then it just went away. And then we went back to that, um, like, just talking in this fantasies and whatever. And long story short, I'm not going to go through everything. But um, I remember at a stage I, I, I had to go through ranks, like, in the in in the kingdom of darkness, they have ranks. I had to go through ranks, um, and then at at the end, I was speaking to Satan himself. And by this time, we were not on earth anymore. We were in another realm, and it was like there was nothing, nothing around us. And me and him, we were sitting at a table. Um, and this was just like a business transaction or whatever. 
and just on that table there was light but around I couldn't see anything and I mean because it was in another realm there was no there was no like time or anything it's just like it's not here on earth so it felt like I was there for years the way everything was just like everything was just spoken and we talked so much and it felt I was so depleted so like so um tired afterwards I couldn't like you know I was so 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 tired because it just felt like I was like there for decades 10 20 years I mean it just because there were, were no time they and he told me listen what do you want is there something that God does that you don't like I'm like no God is like perfect whatever he does is fine and then time would go on we would talk about other stuff and he would come back to the same question same question same question same question so that time when we were talking I would just go deeper 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 into the deceitfulness or whatever all the lies and stuff and then he will come back he will ask me again is there anything that God does that you don't like and after a while I was just like yes um, you know because I'm sorry I just want to say this they, they access your subconscious mind so they're going deep 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 down they can even like let you remember stuff from when you were a baby in your mom's womb you understand so yeah, and then I said yes. You know, since a young age, I felt like I am not in control of my life. That my life was just written in a book. Um, God wrote down whatever I'm gonna do from the beginning to the end, and I'm just following along. Um, and it's like okay, so um, I can I can change that. But let me just also tell you this, name. He, co- he couldn't do anything without getting permission from God. Because me and him, we would sit face to face um, in front of each other. And then before he could answer or do anything, he would leave. And he would come back and he said, okay, let's do it. And if there's something I asked, then he would say, no, it, you can't ask for that. Or yes, you can ask for that. So, God is completely in control, ultimately. He does allow certain things for reasons, but ultimately, no matter what, He is still in control. Because I went through that experience, so I saw it with my own eyes. I know that God is in complete control. Satan couldn't do anything if God didn't allow it because he would go and after a while I asked him where are you going like who are you asking permission for the whole time and he didn't answer me he just said let's continue so um, yeah and then he said okay so um, from this day forward you can choose your 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 life your your future whatever you say will be done I'm like okay so I started asking for weird stuff because I thought it was a joke I'm like okay this 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 like stupid stuff man and it um of um like after that night the stuff did happen so yeah um everything happened as I said but I just wanted to clarify that because we are sons and daughters of the Most High King um, whatever we say you know the power of life and death is in the tongue whatever we say will come to pass because we have received authority from our King our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ so the the evil entities and spirits in from the kingdom of darkness they know this and they use it to their ability to do their stuff on earth whatever they want to do so they get people who don't understand the stuff who don't know the spiritual realm <coughs> um <coughs> excuse me 
who don't know the Bible, who don't know God, who don't, doesn't know anything, and they use it to their advantage. Because here I am, I say, I want to plan my own future, and they definitely took advantage of that. So whatever I said would happen. And then they would also, like, I remember at a time, there was just like so many demons manifesting through me. So many different ones. And they would say stuff. They would use my body and my voice and everything to speak stuff through me. And I can't remember everything, but whatever they spoke, it came to pass. And... um this was in 2019 and whatever happened in COVID all the evil agendas they had it was also spoken through me whatever happened like the fires there where was it in Australia or New Zealand or I I don't really remember all that stuff since 2019 a lot of like natural disasters and a lot of stuff (coughs) was spoken through me that evening and everything came to pass because Remember, Satan knows the Bible, and he knows that God can't lie. And the power of life and death is in the tongue. And those who love it will reap the reward of it. So, yeah, um, the main focus of COVID was to see if the, the, the mark of the animal will be able to stand. Because I know a lot of um, big companies force people to get the the jab. Um, So in that way they tested that if they're going to force you to get the mark of Satan, of the mark of the animal, um, will it like will it stand will it work and then also with the mask we had to wear you couldn't go into any uh, shop anymore anywhere without a mask so they so they trial run it to see that if you don't have the mark of the animal will you be able to go into a store or anything and they they um so it was successful with what they did so that was just Mainly the main reason about COVID. I'm not going to go in too, too deep stuff because I did share some stuff and a lot of people don't understand it because they don't understand the spiritual realm and the legal rights Satan gets over people, why certain people could get COVID, why certain people could not get it and all that stuff. It's all spiritual, but I don't think that is the purpose of my testimony, so I'm just going to go to something else. Um, yeah, so just a lot of stuff was spoken through me. And then I was just like opened more and more and more and more in the spirit. I could um, astral project. I could astral project into other people. So it's not to say if a person says they are um, a Christian that they really are. Even pastors, if they have um, spiritual doors open. Any person in the spiritual realm or demon can manifest or jump into them. They call it a zombie or whatever. You jump into that person. You can see what that person is doing. You could speak through that people. I mean, how many times have you heard people say, it wasn't me. I can't believe I did that or stuff like that. Because it's really, this is spiritual stuff. Um, Yeah, I just like so many stuff I did. And then... um, Okay, I just feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me it's finished. I don't have to go deeper. Um, I think that was whatever I had to say. Um, I think I don't want to stay stuck on this subject because um, the main thing is that God got me out of it. And I really, really want to emphasize this. I went to so many people. I went to an ex-Satanist who does deliverance for people who taught me I'm lying. There's no way what I'm saying is true. Um, I went to past to so many spiritual, quote-unquote, spiritual leaders try to help me. No one could. No one, no one, no one could. Um, 
and I was just so defeated. I just cried out in my bed. I'm like, God, I can't, I can't take it anymore. I can't. This spiritual warfare is crazy. I can't take it anymore. And I just, I stumbled on, on Kurtz. Um, that by that time, I think it was on Facebook, and we did do deliverance, but um. As I said, not everything was opened up to me. So I didn't know that I had born a child during all this and that this child was used as a sacrifice unto Satan. I was not aware of that. It was only revealed to me a couple of months ago, I think, yeah. And all of this happened in 2019. So after that was revealed, I reached out to Kurt again and I told him, like, listen, uncle, I can't take it. Like, I thought I was free and stuff, but I can feel there's still something. I can feel it. And we went through deliverance again. And um, finally, after so many years, um, I am actually now free and I know whatever happened God did it for a reason and it's for his glory and for a purpose and I am called for a purpose I am called for such a time as this I glorify my father in heaven for choosing me thank you so much Lord you know God God's word is so true you will really never leave you and you will never depart from you No matter what you're going through. And he will never let you be tasted above what you can handle. But just as Jesus went into the wilderness immediately after he got baptized. So I was also tasted after I got baptized. You know, the Bible, Paul writes clearly that our faith has to be tasted. Just as gold is purified in the furnace, so our faith also will be tested by fire to see if it is pure. You know, loyalty is very, very crucial to God. And at the end of the day, you can also read the book of Job. No matter what, Satan cannot do anything by his own. God is ultimately still in control. And um, whatever legal rights he has over you, you have to break it when you when you give your life to God. You have to break it. <clears throat> That's why deliverance is so crucial. You cannot be free. You cannot be under the authority of Jesus Christ if you still have spiritual doors and chains open to the enemy. And after so many years, of being tormented and crazy crazy spiritual warfare I mean so many people and stuff would manifest here in my room I couldn't sleep for how many years the stuff I would see and yeah it was just crazy never had any like peace or joy the fruit of the spirit I will never take it for granted because after I got delivered I got baptized again just to feel I just felt like you know what I was standing there in my church and they were baptizing people I didn't even know they were going to baptize people and I just felt the Holy Spirit say go get baptized again go get baptized again I'm like what I already got baptized And I went to my pastor and I said, Pastor, I think I have to get baptized again. He's like, no, you already got baptized. What's going on? And like inside I'm praying, I'm saying, God, if this is your will, you see my pastor doesn't want to baptize me because he knows I have been baptized. If it's not your will, don't let me get baptized. But if it's your will, let me get baptized. And and he said, what has changed? Why do you want to get baptized again? And I said, Pastor, you know, most... Um, all this occult stuff happened to me after I got baptized, and I just fe- and I just got delivered, and I just feel like I just I just want to get rid of everything once and for all. I just 
I just feel like I have to get baptized again. And he said, you know what, it's fine. And he got into the pool, and I got in and I got baptized again. And I couldn't sleep for two straight days. The Holy Spirit was like just like working with me the whole time. But even since then, it's been about two, three weeks now. It's just like, man, I can just feel I'm so under God. I've never felt peace or joy like this in a very, very long time. I'm so happy. I'm crying, but this is tears of joy. I'm so happy. I have so much joy and peace in my heart. And, and I, love my, I love my Lord so much. And I thank Him so much for everything that happened. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Him. And... Uh, and I just want to tell everyone who listens to this that God loves you and He did choose you for a reason. You know, God doesn't make mistakes. He's, a, he's perfect. God doesn't make losers and He doesn't make things just, for, just to make them. He makes them for a purpose. He's an intentional per- person. God is very intentional. He created you for a reason and for a purpose. And I pray that you will know your identity, that you would know your purpose, that you would come to know your Father, that you would come to know Jesus, and that you would come to know the Holy Spirit, that they will come and make their home inside of you, fill you with love and kindness, and just surround you with peace. I really pray that for you. And, yeah... I don't, uh, man, I am a living testimony that God exists. I am. There is no other way to explain how I am. Because people who knew me on school, if they could see me now, they're like, what? Is this the same person? So, yeah, I think um, I did say what had to be said. The Holy Spirit did lead me, and I know for a fact that everything that was said is the truth because I pray that um, God will tie my tongue and that I won't speak anything other than the truth so I thank you so much for listening to this may God bless you may may God make his face shine upon you may he keep you may he uphold you with his righteous right hand Thank you so much for listening to my testimony. I bless you with the full fruit of the Holy Spirit and with a revival of the Christian faith in your heart. The Holy Spirit will come and He will water all the seeds that have been planted. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, Amen.